Ooh, what is up, guys? Of course, welcome to another Pokemon Wi Fi battle with yours truly, the Scarender. And today we're going against Estefan. He's a follower on Twitter and a very, very capable battler. And uh, I was basically just searching for battles and uh, we went with any tier, but I really wanted my own team that I have constructed to work. So it's basically an RU team with basically just one RU because of the Pokemon in it. It's pretty viable to make this thing work. Uh, going through Estefan's team here, he got Toxic Rogue, um, the Tyrant, uh, Gengar, Umbreon, Sorarg, and Zableye, which I do expect is going to be his Mega Pokemon. And just looking at it, that is definitely one bulky team with a lot of offensive pressure. And um, I was generally scared there, to be honest, because I really didn't know what to expect. Uh, he could either bring a Tyrant Room or a Sableye and, as a beginner, so I'm going to keep on touch with that and um, actually bring my Vileplume as Gecko. Uh, like I said, I'm using Vileplume, uh, Mantine, Assault Vest Pangoro with Drain Punch, Ice Punch, uh, Dew Blade, Fiscal Emolga with Choice Band, and a uh, Mega Camerot, of course. And uh, Camerot works really well in conjunction with Mantine to cover up the water weaknesses and... Um, Mantine works great with the Molga because of the motor drive and uh, nullifying the electric damage damage. So those three are great core and Dubla is there to cover up for the rock ice weaknesses. And basically Pangoro is there to take the rock and retaliate, which it does really, really well. And Pangoro is just a defensive supporter and uh, basically just going to troll whatever comes in. So with that in mind, like I said, I'm going to start with Wild Plume because I do expect him to start with Tarantrum actually. Because I really thought that he might want to get up those rocks because they will hinder my uh, Mantine tremendously. So anyway, let's actually get to this battle. So to be honest with you guys, I really was very unsure on how Mega Sableye really works. I never really looked at it. I know it's super defensive, but that's about it. And I got Magic Pounce. So anyway, he will start off with the Sableye, and uh, I'm just going to go with Ling on the Vault Plume. And I'm going to go for Lead Seed here, because I did not expect him to make it all right with that, because he does lose the Prankster. So, a little overprediction on my part here, hoping for him to not do it. So he's going to set up Coal Mines, and at this point I really had nothing to bring in. I was a little scared to bring my Pangora out of the bat in case it carried down... Uh, what's it called? The Dazzling Gleam. So anyway, I go for Sludge Bomb instead. I know it won't do any damage, I'm just going to fish for a Poison Effect, because I do know that either though I can't really take it down, Sableye is not that strong, even though Cowl Mines boost it. So I do score a poison after the second slush bug, which is very important because that will wheel it down pretty much faster. And the Dark Pulse does roughly half, so I really felt alright, Pangor can come in from this point. And when it comes to uh, Mega Sableye, I really feel that Shadow Ball and Dazzling Gleam is a superior choice for coverage since Dark Pulse really can't flinch anything because, let's face it, Sableye is really fucking slow, like tremendously slow. So anyway, Pangoro is in here, and like I said, guys saw that no issue whatsoever with the um, Dark Pulse there, and uh, my knockoff, while not doing as much damage, it still is in range where I can deal with it. And uh, I felt that he's gonna switch out now, so I went for Ice Punch in case I just wanted some neutral damage on anything, really. So the Tarantum is coming in, and uh, you know, it does some fair damage here. Uh, and I do get to freeze, but it won't matter because he will actually fall out the second or first turn here. So the Fire Fang almost takes me out. I should be really glad I didn't go for a fire or an earthquake or anything like that. But the Drain Punch here will finish it off really nicely, getting back some HP. Gonna lose some for Rocky Helmet, but then again, I don't care. I really don't care. That was definitely a good trade off, and Pangoro is definitely showing off what he's made of. So, anyway, here is the Gengar, and I'm just gonna switch out because I don't know that the Dazzling Gleam is coming, there was no reason for him not bringing it that with the case. Mantine will soak it up really, really nicely. And here's where I do a little over-predicament to say that. Because I thought when, since I had a Molga on my part, that he wouldn't dare to go for a Thunderbolt, but he definitely shows me the opposite and uh, pretty much, you know, sacking off my Mantine right here. Because like I said, I really didn't think that he would dare to do it, because he will set up my motor drive, which will make me faster than his Gengar and actually hurt him. So he was really, really gutsy here and I was definitely pushing my luck here and uh, losing my Mantine in the process. So very good play on my opponent and really, really frustrating on my part. But then again, 
So I'm gonna get a fine entry here to my Dew Blade, and I'm actually forced to go for a Shadow Sneak because I can't really risk taking a Shadow Ball. So he's gonna take this opportunity to bring his Umbreon, and uh, I really felt that I needed to switch out here, or rather, I was waiting for him uh, if he's had a foul play or not. So with that in mind, I actually decided to like set it to go out, scout out if that's the part, if that's the case. So going to Honey Pie. And he actually goes for a healer here, which shows me that it is a support set, and uh, he at least not now is not fearing the Dewblade. So I'm just gonna go for a U-turn, see what he's all about, and he um, will actually prove really nicely. This U-turn proves me that he's not that well invested in uh, defense, which means that I can actually bring back my Dewblade. And from here on out, I'm actually in a very, very nice position, because he shows me assurance, which means that I know for a fact there that foul play is not very likely. And uh, I'm just gonna set off a sword stance and see if he has, like I said, foul play because I am slower, so uh, there is no reason for me not to go for a sword stance. He, he could pack it, I mean, what do I know, right? So anyway, I pack up this sword stance, and after this, since I saw him wish, I really didn't want to give him the opportunity to attack me anyway, so I'm just gonna go for Sacred Sword. And uh, yeah, that is really unfortunate because he's gonna bring the Sable Light, which now, of course, with the Heal Bell, is not poisoned anymore and back in full health. So I was forced to attack and due to the Mega Evolution I am faster and I score a crit here which is really really unfortunate for him of course but then again with that if it were on a crit I still do around 50% which means that that crit did not matter as much as it looked and my Dew Blade is actually able to take out the Mega Save Light which is incredible and uh, very lucky to be honest. So anyway I'm going for a Shadow Sneak here I did not expect his Pokemon or his Toxic Rope to beat his Sora Hark. Uh, it's a very nice play on his side because I did not expect it, and this knockoff will do a bit too much. And with that in mind, I really felt that, alright, I really, really don't want him to take any more damage, so I went to flay my Pangoro because I know I can wall him out, and I actually hope for him to switch out here. So I went for a knockoff, which he actually does too. Uh, I really didn't. I, to be honest, I didn't think he had a gust to say in. So even though Knockoff takes him out, it's still a missed opportunity for me to go for Drain Punch. But you know, he still had the Gengar, and I had to I had to play like that, I really did. So anyway, Hasama is back on, and of course the Dazzling Gleam is extremely real, and I'm not... Since the Umbreon is still around, I really need Pangora for him. So I'm just gonna pretty much sack off Emolga here, which actually is not going to be proven to be too useful here. But he actually decides to switch out! Which I did not expect, so I go for a knockoff, I just went for filler move to be honest. So I knock off the Assault Vest, which is actually is not gonna matter because I really didn't feel that uh, I don't gonna hit him with special side anyway. So I go into the Lingon, expecting him to go for an Ice Punch at best, but he actually didn't. So I got a golden opportunity here to set up some lead seed and uh, I really felt that, you know, he could, you know, if worst case scenario, <laughs> I could actually survive another hit from this guy and go for Giga Drain. Since I'm not faster, but I still feel that I'm bulky enough to be able to cope with that, this Ice Punch will prove to be enough. And really, it's fine, it really is, because this gives me the golden opportunity to bring Mordor, the Black Camerot, and look at this. Camrot in black is just so cool, the lava flow from it is just amazing, it looks so freaking cool. And look at this, this is a crit brain punch, not even one fourth. It's so goddamn bulky, and of course this flame for with the Shear Force will obliterate this Torkoal, he has no chance of living whatsoever. So the only points we got left is Umbreon and Gengar, and he's just gonna set up right out to bat a wish, I am super slow, like Sableye. Mega Camerot is extremely slow, so even though this flamethrower does roughly 50%, I know it's very likely for him to go for Protect, so I might as well just bring my Pangoro and uh, trying to force him out to be honest. So I am actually gonna go for a knockoff this turn, and Assurance will do nothing, so which proves that he's obviously not packing the Protect, which I so like told myself throughout this battle that he did. So, like I said, I'm just gonna go for a knockoff, and he actually decides to switch out, so I did expect him that he might feel forced to uh, think that I might go for a Drain Punch. So, even though this is a great prediction on my part, it still stands to this that even though if I would have missed the Pangoro, it's still no way that either the Umbreon nor the Gengar could have dealt properly with um, 
with my duplex we are still alive so even though that prediction you know looks really nice it's uh, I still kind of had the win from this point on and uh, sadly I must say I did some routine play in Sierra which actually full to be just about enough to finish off this game really really nicely and I really need to thank Stefan for this battle too because we talked about it on Twitter afterwards and he really said that the worst part was that due to the Pokemon I was using he really felt unsure on what to do so even though he felt that he has a stronger team he felt that the, the surprise factor of my team was more than he could handle and I did some nice protection and like I said I did some routine plays in the end which made me win the battle but it was definitely in the middle spot where it really mattered and I came through barely because of that. So I hope you guys enjoyed that battle and if you did make sure to leave a like of course and if you're new to my channel don't forget to subscribe and uh, a little question of the day which mega pokemon do you want to see me use here in the future because I'm going to try to avoid tier 4 at least sometime. I'm going to you know, stay on NURU but I can definitely think of trying a few mega pokes so if you have any suggestions or sets make sure to write that down below and uh, yeah other than that still waiting for the capture card but you know it'll get here eventually and uh, I'm really glad you guys took the time to watch this. Assault with Pangoro is definitely a thing, and it works really well. Just make sure you have the correct coverage to uh, avoid the super effective fair damage. So, anyway guys, thank you all for watching, and remember, the sky is the limit. So have a good day, and take care, alright? Bye.